so i welcome all of you to our discussion today on this case we have a very interesting abc to discuss today so we have a patient a 40 a 40 year old male he had a traumatic brain injury right and in the icu now is he is on ventilator so the abc was normal when he arrived so now now he is in shock right and on noradrenaline now the abc that we have repeated it shows patient is severely acidotic ph is 7.10 and carbon dioxide level is 35 bicarb is 11 and lactate is 4.9 of course potassium is 3.2 sodium is 146 chloride is 129 and iron is calcium is 0.89 okay. so how to interpret this abc i was very surprised actually all of you have said that it is a normal nn gap acidosis which is correct which is correct it is a normal nn gap acidosis but none of you has mentioned anything about this lactate this lactate is increased can it contribute to some kind of acidosis right so let us discuss what are the other things that is there in this abg and how to look how to look at abg in a more broader way in our patient the as all of you have said you have diagnosed the patient is having metabolic acidosis because ph is 7.31 bicarb is 11 so if you calculate a nan gap in our patient that is sodium minus bicarbonate plus chloride in this case it is coming to be 6 which is normal so patient is having a normal nan gap acidosis right but since the patient is have also having a lactate lactate of 4.9 so this suggests something and lactate cannot produce a normal nn gap acidosis lactate will produce a high nn gap acidosis so even though in this case we have a normal nn gap because the normal nn gap acidosis had overpowered had overshadowed the high nn gap acidosis but because lactate is 4.9 and it can only produce a hagma or high nn gap acidosis so patient is having a hagma despite the fact that the nn gap is normal right so if you start the discussion from a high lactate and the patient is having a hagma and you calculate the delta gap that is the change in nn gap by change in bicarb in this case it is coming more than one so more than one means patient is having a hagma so that is true we have proved it so if you start from a high nn gap acidosis even though the nn gap is normal because lactate is high and calculate the delta gap it suggests there is a nagma and also if calculated the nn gap it suggests of a nagma right so now we are confirmed that the patient is having two types of acidosis one is normal nn gap acidosis another is high nn gap acidosis right now next is to calculate the expected psu2 so how to calculate the expected psu2 right that is by using the winters formula in metabolic acidosis the formula goes like this bicarbonate into 1.5 plus 8 plus minus 2 so in our case if we calculate this psu2 level is coming between 23 to 26 but psu2 in our case is 35 so there is incomplete respiratory compensation incomplete so patient is having a respiratory acidosis also this case also had hyperchloremia hypernatremia hypokalemia and hyper lactatemia also the patient had hypocalcemia now let us discuss what are the cause of each of these things right and it's very interesting so patient is having a high nn gap acidosis how do you know it because lactate is high and lactate can produce a high nn gap acidosis so although the nn gap is normal because it is overshadowed by the normal nn gap acidosis but patient is having a hagma because of the lactate patient is having a shock or noradrenaline because of catecholamine use patient can have a high lactic acid and because patient is also having a traumatic brain injury patient can have seizure and that seizure can increase the lactate so all these things can produce a high nn gap acidosis in our patient Right. patient is also having nagma that is normal nn gap acidosis right because nn gap is normal that means 
and also we calculated the delta gap that is also more than one so patient is definitely having a nagma right so from where the nagma has come out as all of you said overzealous or excessive use of the saline but in this particular case traumatic brain injury the use the use of hypertonic saline is a common thing right in the beginning they must have used hypertonic saline and later when patient went to shock they must have used normal saline for acetacin and both of these can cause a normal anangiva cirrhosis right so that is the thing then patient is a cirrhosis why it happened because normally when a patient is acidotic it is compensated by respiratory alkalosis so in a norm, in normal patient who is not sedated he can hyperventilate and maintain the carbon dioxide to a normal ph but in our case because patient is on ventilator most probably he is sedated so cannot compensate by hyperventilating but this respiratory acidosis may be intentional may be actually favored or intentional because a low normal psu2 is actually favored in tbi because if you use a higher co2 it will cause vasodilation increase icp if you use a very low co2 it can cause vasoconstriction increase vein injury so the level psu2 35 in our case is actually ideal for our case so maybe this respiratory acidosis that patient is having it actually intentional right so now there is very interesting phenomenon why there is hypokalemia in this in our case right usually when there is acidosis potassium utilizes because the potassium exchanges with the h plus ion so acidosis is always associated with potassium increase but in our case it is low even with acidosis severe acidosis 7.1 ph potassium 3.2 so actually potassium is very very low so this can only happen in some situation that is called type 1 or distal rta in that case there will be hypokalemia with acidosis so our case is also having a type 1 or distal RTA. So this can be one of the cause of a normal anangiva cirrhosis. Type 1 or distal renal tubular cirrhosis. Right. So this you have to be very careful. When you are seeing a ABG, the other parameter also can help in diagnose something that is unrelated can influence our decisions. Right. Person is having hypocalcemia, which is important in this case. Why? because it can produce or exacerbate circulatory failure so our patient is in shock on noradrenaline so it's prudent to correct hypo hypocalcemia so urgent correction is necessary to improve the hemodynamic stability so don't bother about its cause in the beginning so it may have variety of causes that you can find out but in the beginning when the patient is in shock we have to correct it urgently to produce hemodynamic stability also our patient is hypernatremic so in tbi up to 155 decreases the icp so actually beneficial so it may not need any correction right now the hypernatremic acidosis are favorable in our case the higher nangipa acidosis produced due to lactic acid even though the nangipa is normal can be due to shock catecholamine menu and seizure that has to be dealt with individually of course, we have a normal NN gap that is severe acidosis due to hypertonic saline use or excess saline use or a type 1 RTA. Right? That has to be dealt with separately. Right? And hypocalcemia you could treat it. So this is how we read an AVG. We read each and every part of it and how they are related to each other and how we can deal individually each of them and collectively. Right? Thank you very much.